This is a Dude Studios production. And hey, I'm the dude. Welcome back to the Hey Bartender Podcast, the podcast that was designed for the people of the service industry. Because the service industry, we need a voice. Well, well no, we don't really need a voice. We're all pretty loud and obnoxious as we are. But, uh, I mean, come on, let's all admit it. We, we do stand out in the crowd. But, uh, you know, uh, just you know, getting on here, sharing a few stories about working behind the bar, working behind the counter, working behind the apron. That's, you know, pretty much our lives right there. I am the dude. I am your bartender. You can call me Anthony if you're good with names. Unfortunately, I'm not, but uh, trust me, just because I don't remember your name doesn't mean I don't like you. That's uh, it's just the way my mind works. I tried that whole thing where I've tried to say your name three times after you meet me, but do you know how often that comes off as creepy? You know, you shake somebody's hand and they say, hey, I'm uh, Walter, and you go, Walter, Walter, Walter. It comes off weird, doesn't it? So maybe try to say it in your head or something like that, or if that works. Maybe that's where I always went wrong. I tried to say it in my head, but it just didn't stick. But, you know, I've got to still uh, seem respectable to the customers and try to keep a smile on my face as often as I can. And the times that I didn't keep a smile on my face, some of the customers knew that I was still in a good mood, but other customers were a little standoffish. But uh, nonetheless, I was in a good mood. But before we get too far along with uh, this Hey Bartender uh, episode of Hey Bartender podcast, you know it's April 3rd, Saturday, 2021. It's the day before Easter. And, uh, you, know, um, you know, I haven't been practicing the whole Lent thing for quite a few years. But this is the end of Lent. Uh, Easter Sunday is coming up. So, uh, some of you people that maybe tried to dial it down a little bit and, uh, or stopped drinking completely, hey, that's completely cool. Uh, but in case you want to ease your way back in, I got a drink recipe for you. I got this off of the DiageoBarAcademy.com website. You can get on there and pretty much add in any, uh, any stipulation where the, you want. It's, you can put in a season, you can put in a certain liquor, you can put in a holiday, you can put in any type of uh, situation that you're looking for. This week, I picked the Yukon Jack Shredder, because all I wanted to know is how many drinks out there can you make with Yukon Jack? So, uh, so I decided to look it up on this website, and they came up with something uh, classic, simple, Good for springtime since it's coming up. I know some of you people out there in the United States are still uh, a little bit under a little bit of snow. But, uh, you know, when the sun does start to shine and you're starting to feel a little bit happier, um, this uh, Yukon Jack Shredder might help you out a little bit. Diageo Bar Academy describes it as this. Yukon Ho, you'll love this Canadian classic with Caribbean flair. Yukon Jack liqueur chilled with pineapple juice and served straight up. Sweet and smooth with a nice whiskey bite. All you're going to need is 40 milliliters of Yukon Jack liqueur and 100 milliliters of pineapple juice. Preparation goes as follows. Add Yukon Jack and pineapple juice. Serve over ice in a highball glass. That's it. And it it sounds like a uh, good tasty drink um, of the pineapple juice, the sweetness of the pineapple juice. And sometimes I like that extra little bite. Uh at the end when I do drink. I don't drink often, but when I do, sometimes I just, uh, just want to l- want that little bit of a bite. Not enough to clear out my sinuses, but just enough to remind me what I'm drinking. And Hey Bartender Podcast reminds all of you to encourage your cust- you and your customers, I should say, to drink responsibly. When you uh, go out there and you uh, work, uh, just remember your customers, you want them to come back at, as many times as possible. So keep an eye on them. Make sure that they get home safe. Make sure you get your home safe if you decide to have one or two before going home after your shift. So there you go. Today I was reading in social media and uh, uh, and in the news that 
Georgia actually has passed some laws right now where you can actually serve alcoholic drinks to go. That's weird. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, back when I used to bartend, you know, or back when I was younger, period, uh, I, I lived in Oregon, and alcoholic drinks were not allowed outside anywhere. At least this, this is the way it was in Oregon. If you were caught walking down the street with an alcoholic beverage in your hand, in fact, I got, I got a story about that. Uh, this was when I was going to audio production school in Seattle, and I was hanging out with this one guy, and uh, I was just hanging out in his place. We were sitting down. He was having a beer. I wasn't having anything because I'm not much of a drinker, and I'm comfortable with that. But uh, he decided that he really wanted to go to the store or he wanted to walk down the street for something. I don't really remember anymore, but he just cracked open a beer and he told this other guy about, uh, that he really wanted to go wherever he was going. I don't, like I said, I don't remember where they were going. And, uh, I said, you just cracked that beer. You're going to finish it first before you go outside. And he, uh, he goes, ah, no, I'll just, uh, I'll just keep it hidden. Well, sure enough on his way through there, he, uh, on his way to wherever he was going, pretty much right outside the apartment buildings that we were living in in downtown Seattle, he got caught. It was quickly spotted that he had a beer in his hand, and he was quickly, uh, uh, I don't think he was detained. I don't think he was brought to jail or anything like that, but he was charged with an open container. And uh, immediately, uh, he had to go to court for it, and uh, after going to court, he had to... uh, attend AA meetings for a certain amount of time, which were comp- completely worthless for him to go to these AA meetings because as, as soon as he was done uh, with the AA meetings, first thing he would do is stop by the local grocery store, pick up a six-pack, 12-pack, whatever, and then go home, drink, and watch movies all night. Uh, not exactly the most responsible thing to do in the world, but uh, that's just the way he did it. It's not the first time I've seen somebody uh, celebrate their uh, getting out of AA or getting out of jail uh, by uh, because they got arrested for alcohol, uh, open container, or being drunk. And they get out of jail, and the first thing they do is go out and get a drink. And once in a while, you worry about your friends or your customers and think, "Do you did you learn anything? I mean, come on. But uh, as of right now, Georgia has just opened up the ability for restaurants to uh, have to-go cups for alcoholic beverages. So what's uh, what's the deal here? Are you able to drive up to a restaurant and order Long Island iced tea and then be able to drive home? Now, uh, I'm sure I, I haven't read completely into it, and if somebody could uh, uh, inform me a little bit more about it, that would be great. So we can talk about it on this show. But uh, in... The restaurant business, back when I used to uh, be in the restaurant business, if somebody was caught uh, driving home uh, under the influence of alcohol, they were immediately asked, uh, where did you just come from? And then they would say the name of of the bar that they were just at. So me being the smartest smartest I am, if I couldn't talk the person into taking a cab, talk the person into uh, getting... Uh, calling a friend to pick them up or something like that, or having a designated driver in the group even. If I couldn't talk them into that, and my responsibility pretty much ended as soon as they walked out the door, because I can't chase them out the door, and because that's ju- that would scare customers away. And uh, sure, once in a while, there have been times where I've seen other bartenders, not me, uh, you know, really worry about their customer and end up, uh, and they got on the police non-emergency number, tell them the person's name, license plate, make and model of their car just because they're worried about them. I don't know if any of you other bartenders have done that, but I have seen bartenders do it. But now that we, uh, because of COVID and all this sort of thing, a uh, few liquor laws have changed probably parts in various parts of the United States. Now, uh, in West Texas, where I live right now, I uh, I laughed when I first came here because Oregon has some pretty tight liquor laws, and you know, 
in Oregon, you had if uh, you couldn't have an open container anywhere, and if you did have uh, uh, alcohol in your car, it had to be in a space where you could not get to it. So you had to put it behind you in the back seat, or you had to put it in the trunk. So it, like like if you wanted to went stop by the local liquor store and decided you needed a bottle of Jack Daniels, you had to put it in a place where the cops were completely certain that you couldn't just reach over and take a swig as you were driving down the road. But now, here in Texas, uh, I when I noticed all of the stuff that was happening around here, we've got drive through liquor stores out here. Bill Ingvall was right, because uh, I thought it was just a joke when he said he grew up in... Uh, grew up in Texas, and you, you know, in Texas we got drive-through liquor stores. You can just drive them, say, "Give me a margarita." <clears throat> you know, you know, I'm I'm a person on the go. Give me a mar- margarita, and uh, I gotta get I got stuff to do. And when I got here, I was just like, "Son of a gun!" It 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 actually happens out here. We have places that you can go get a strawberry daiquiri or a margarita or a pina colada, and uh, get it from a drive-through. Now, uh, I decided to try it with a friend one time. She asked me, hey, can we try it just once? And I was like, well, sure, I'm not going to have anything, uh, but you you go right ahead. And so we pull up to this, uh, pull up to this place. It's a place that uh, I normally buy cigarettes, but, I, uh, but they also do these pina colada or uh, these frozen drinks. And they actually handed us a menu, and she, she starts looking through it. And from this drive through window, she ordered uh, something like a strawberry daiquiri and some other frozen drink. And she also got jello shots, which shocked the hell out of me. But when we finally got our order, uh, everything was in a, all the jello shots were in a bag, and the frozen drinks had painter's tape, you know, the blue stuff. Uh, across the top of the cup so that I'm assuming I didn't ask for certain, but I'm assuming it's just so you don't just pop your straw into the top of it and, uh, you know, start driving away. Uh, it probably discouraged that it was meant to discourage it a little bit, but I kept thinking, well, what's to stop a person just from taking, taking the blue tape off and, uh, slamming a straw in there, you know, there's, there's, well, where's where's the safety in that but she kept it the way it was and we went back to my place and she sat down she she drank it I tried to drink some of it with her but like I said I'm a lightweight and I can't really handle too much and uh save the jello shots for much much later because you know you got uh don't want to drink too much all at one time because we were sitting watching tv and I started sitting back thinking well that's weird you know you can go and get a mixed drink now the mixed drink that uh well it's not a mixed drink it's a frozen drink and so like usually with strawberry daiquiri you just put a little bit of rum in it and strawberry mix ice blend that fucker up and then you're off to the races but then you all of a sudden get a complaint from the customer as when you're a bartender uh you get a complaint from the customer going excuse me but is there any alcohol in this and you have to explain to them, yes, there's one shot of rum in there. That's the way daiquiris are made. And then they uh, give you the usual story. Well, I can taste the alcohol at home. I can't taste any alcohol in this. And, of course, bartenders, uh, servers alike, we all get frustrated over that. But now, today, it's not just uh, these little places on the corner of the street that you can go to to pick up a uh, refreshing alcoholic beverage, you can actually go to a bar in some states and say, give me a Long Island iced tea to go. And, you know, they send it out in a plastic cup. Probably do the same thing, like maybe like the boba tea and have the have the plastic where you have to really jam the straw in the, type, uh, in the top of it. I honestly don't know yet. I haven't done a ton of research on this. But I start to wonder things like, where does the bartender's responsibility end and start? Now, now, like I said, uh, there were times where somebody got a little tipsy at my bar and I would end up worrying about them and say, hey, dude, let me call you a cab or, 
Can I call somebody to take you home? Uh, hell, there was even one night where one of my customers got a little bit too tipsy, and they, uh, at, they, I told them sit at the bar, drink this coffee, and as soon as I'm done with all my side work, I'll take you home. And that night it ended well because they paid attention to me, and I drove them back to their apartment. I helped them out to their uh, apartment door. And once they were in the door, the door was shut. My responsibility was over, got in my car and drove home feeling be- uh, good about myself for some reason, because I helped somebody get home responsibly and which there wasn't going to, uh, you know, if they would have driven home like the hour and a half it, it took uh, before an hour and a half, it took for me to close the bar there probably was a slight chance they would fall asleep, but I gave them coffee before I said, okay, I'm done. Let's go. And, uh, so they were still slightly awake, but I'm sure as soon as they got into their apartment, they fell flat on their face on the couch or found their bed and just went thump asleep. There was even another customer that I had that, uh, they were having a bad day. Uh, nothing truly serious, just overly stressed and decided I need to put a lot of alcohol in my system. And we stopped him at a point and we just said, you ca- calm down just a little bit, have a little bit of coffee or water. Do you prefer water and just sit back and relax for a little while. And we'll give you another drink, uh, in an hour, let's say. And they, they agreed to it because they're a restaurant owner. They understand what we're going through. But as the night progressed along, he started to fall asleep. And in Oregon, uh, you can't just let somebody sleep on your bar. If the Liquor Control Commission comes in or the Sheriff's Department comes in, they see somebody sleeping at your bar, they automatically assume you oversert them and they, uh, and then you get in trouble for it. You get a citation for it. So we were doing our best to keep him awake. And I warned one of my waitresses, don't get anywhere near this customer because, uh, because he's well, just do your best to, uh, keep him awake, but don't get too close. And sure enough, as soon as they woke up, they tried to kiss the waitress. And I, you know, I was like, Hey, I warned you. And so from the, for the rest of the night, I told her, Stay, go help out the customers out on the floor. We'll watch him. Uh, my friend Shannon and I, were, we were going to watch him, try to keep him awake. And as soon as uh, he got his wind back, it was closing time. So we thought, okay, so he's got his wind back. He's ready to, uh, he's not uh, not tipsy anymore. So he's ready just probably to go home because it's really late. He worked a long shift at his restaurant earlier today, so he's probably ready to go home. So we told him, okay, it's time to go home. And he says, okay, well, uh, thank you guys. Uh, Thanks for looking after me. And so he walked out the door. Now, as soon as we walked out the door, we walked over to another restaurant that was open later than ours just to visit uh, the, the bartender that worked over there. Uh, Barb, I've had her on the show before and we see that he's there and he's on his way to having a couple drinks again. And so we started to worry about him and myself, Shannon and Barb, we were like, okay, no, you're done. You can't, uh, you can't drink anymore tonight. And he was, uh, we tried to, uh, we did, we, he said he was going home, so we didn't alert Barb, but we should have. And he's, he was sitting there, he was swaying, he was, uh, you know, oh, I'm tired of playing the pronoun game. Uh, he was swaying, he was uh, not doing well. So we opted to uh, uh, tell, you know, to get him to avoid to go home. And we actually hooked him up with a nearby, not necessarily four star or three star or two star apartment uh, or hotel room. And put him in bed, and that was interesting, to let uh, to say the least. We were going far above and beyond to make sure this customer uh, made uh, that they were safe, didn't get arrested, didn't get in a car accident, and so uh, 
my friend Shannon, she was sitting there trying to tell him, you know, don't sleep on your back. Don't sleep on your back. And because he was having trouble keeping his food down as it was. And eventually I, uh, Shannon might remember this. I, uh, I said, uh, oh, I'm tired of this because he's not paying attention to you. He wants to sleep on his back. So I jumped up on top of the bed, grabbed him by the belt loop and fi- uh, flipped him over. And he stayed that way. We got a call from him the next morning, uh, asking where his car was. And, uh, we had somebody go pick him up and he, I don't know if he actually reimbursed for the hotel room that we got him. Uh, but it, that had to have been a crappy morning for him. In fact, it was one of those situations where he woke up and uh, immediately asking for a Bloody Mary. But I've gone off topic a little bit. Now, the drive through uh, liquor stores. Now, I was saying before that if a cop pulled a uh, person over, they'd say, where were you? And they'd say whatever bar they were just at. And the most of the time, it would go through the channels, and the cops would either keep a firm eye on the restaurant that was potentially over-serving customers. Or they would have informed the Liquor Control Commission to uh, that, the hey, these people are over-serving. This restaurant has had two reports this month of people being, uh, being over the legal limit coming out of their bar. You might want to check, take an eye on them. And then the Liquor Control Commission sends in a sting or they do a walk around and it, uh, if that doesn't give a bartender anxiety, I don't know what does. But now, in 2021, we have restaurants that are giving drinks out and sending people away. You know, you can stop by the local restaurant. Hey, give me a order of chicken strips, fries, and a, oh, I, I don't know, like an, an, an AMF. I don't know if they're serving multiple liquor drinks yet. I don't know if uh, I don't know all the details, like I said, but let's just for hypothetical situations, you know, they give me a order of chicken strips, fries, and an AMF, and then they get it. Now, my question is at this point in time, where does the res- responsibility of the bartender or server go? What you know, what if this guy does decide, well, you know that this blue tape on the top of my drink is not going to stop me from taking a couple sips. So they just take off the blue tape, jam their straw into it and take a good healthy swig. Now, I don't know if the open container laws are going to come into play or if the laws are going to uh, stipulate you can order a drink, uh, but you can't be drinking it. You can't be seen drinking it or have it in your cup holder, uh, as you're driving down the street. Is that the responsibility now of the bartender or server, or does that go to the responsibility of the person that ordered the drink? Because like, because like I said, uh, sometimes one person gets through, uh, uh, gets somehow gets through the mess where you're trying to watch uh, 30, 40, 50 people, all at one time and make sure they're not getting overserved. make sure that all they're doing is having a good time. And one slips through the cracks because uh, their friends ordered around a couple times or uh, uh, you served them at the bar, but this also, so did also the uh, your waitress and uh, you know, things get mixed up uh, and bartenders servers, we all make mistakes We try to keep things as responsible as possible, but once in a while, a mistake happens and uh, somebody slips through the cracks. Or somebody's just really good at uh, pretending that they're sober. So you think, well, he still looks pretty sober right now, so yeah, I'll go ahead and serve him. I mean, it's like that one time uh, my server, she uh, was questioning this kid. Well, not kid. He was of legal age to drink, over 21. And she started questioning, I don't know if I should serve you. Then she turns to me and says, hey, Anthony, what do you think of this guy? And I walked over and uh, she says, should I give him another drink? Or uh, does he look, uh, how does he look to you? And I, he was leaning on the bar and I looked at him and I said, stand up. And he goes, okay, stands up. And I said, stand up straight. Come on. So he says, oh, okay. 
I said, stick your hands in your air, in the air. And he's like, come on, what's, what's the deal? And I said, put your hands in the air. He's like, all right, fine. And he sticks his hands in the air. And I said, he looks pretty silly to me. And then I walked away and, uh, she, you know, it made everybody around the bar start laughing. And that, uh, as I was walking away, my waitress comes over to me and says, do you think I should serve him? And I said, if you don't feel like serving him, I will back you up a hundred percent. That is, uh, my responsibility to you. If you make a decision, I will back you up. Even though I didn't technically get along with that server, that's that's beside the point. You know, she's still my coworker, and I will back her up in whatever decision she makes. United States Bartenders Guild and Diageo have re- reimagined the world-class U.S. bartending competition by making it virtual that anyone 21 and over is invited to attend. Now you can have a front row seat watching the top 50 bartenders compete in amazing challenges. Catch all the educational studios that inspired this year's competition on DiageoBarAcademy.com. Watch the speed round and the final announcement on April 6th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Only one bartender will go on to represent the U.S. at the World Class Global Finals in Madrid, Spain later this year. Now you're asking, dude, how do I get to this? Visit www.DiageoBarAcademy.com. Click on World Class. Register by April 13th to access the event. And best of all, it's all free. Watch stuff live or watch on demand. Plus, as a bonus, there will be expert-led panels, trend-leading education, and brand education events hosted by industry experts from around the globe. you got to register to the event by April 13th to access all the competition and behind-the-scenes action live or on demand. Visit www.diageobaracademy.com. That's D-I-A-G-E-O baracademy.com. Then click on the World Class banner to register today. Hey, bartender. But now with the drinks to go, you don't know what the person's condition is. The waitress might walk up to the bar, uh, walk up to your car, take your order. Or you might even put your order in online and add a couple spirits on there and they'll bring it out to you. I don't know if they're going to actually do like shots or anything like that. Can you imagine a to-go shot? Is Oh, let's see. Oh, we're all out in the parking lot. We'll take five beers and five shots of whiskey. Uh, I don't really see that happening because, well, like I said, open container laws outside but things might be changing in other places. You might be able to have an open container or what's classified as an open container right now. Uh, I mean, the boba tea, they use, they have these completely sealed caps and you really have to really stab the thing, the thing in order your straw in there in order to start enjoying your drink. So maybe that's what people are going to do nowadays in order to, kind of reassure that your customers aren't going to start drinking their alcoholic beverage on the way home it's kind of like eating mcdonald's french fries you can't just leave them in the in the seat next to you you're always going to grab one or two on your way home if you're into the whole mcdonald's thing i know some of you people don't like mcdonald's anymore but does that add any responsibility to the bartender or the bar restaurant that served that drink if the person decides to uh take a couple sips out of his a mixed drink on the way home and he happens to get pulled over by a cop is the cop going to sit there and think was it served that way was it served with the straw inside it because if the guy already has a straw inside it there's no way really to prove it uh did the restaurant uh use the proper techniques to make sure that he can't just start drinking out of it well what can we really do uh, put a piece of plastic over it and then put the cap on it. You do the boba tea thing. Uh, and so basically what I'm trying to get at is it's another thing that us as the people in the service industry have to look out for. And uh, it might be something that we should be thinking about uh, because we don't want the any kind of liquor control commission or police to uh, start uh, sending stings or watching our business like a uh, with a very very big microscope we want to be able to work comfortably we want to be able to work happily and not worry too much about what's going on and uh, it 
there have been cases in this world where uh, people got into a car accident and the victims involved, not the drunk driver, but the victims involved were able to sue the bartender or the restaurant or both. And because of injuries and stuff like that. And, you know, of us bartenders, we sit back and think, hey, I just served the guy. I didn't didn't think I overserved him, but I just, you know, uh, it, and us bartenders are uh, encourage our customers to drink responsibly. And we try to babysit them to the point where it's uh, where they we know when to stop them. But once in a while, that doesn't end up all that well. The customer starts getting all upset. Like I, I told you about this one customer I had, and they, you know, we tell him, hey, hey, you've had enough for tonight. I mean, his face was bloodshot red, and he was getting a little bit too friendly with other people. And we say, hey, dude, you're done. And he's, I'm not drunk. Look at this. And he sticks his hand out, and it's steady as a rock. Well, you know, when he's not drinking, his hands shake like crazy. And so when his hands are steady as a rock, yeah, he's had enough. And it would inevitably make him really angry. Uh, sometimes he wouldn't be too bad about it, and he'd come back the next day. Other days, you wouldn't see him for weeks. Eventually, uh, I didn't see him at all because he found another place to go. And I'm not sure. I never talked to the people that bartended over at that place. It was one of those... Uh, uh, clubs like Elks Club or something like that. And uh, he started going there because, uh, from what I'm told, the drinks were cheaper. And uh, so I never really saw him again. So uh, so it, I don't really don't know. But seeing his face bright red, and it's like, okay, what am I thinking about? Okay, do I want this customer to get home safe? Well, obviously, because not only could he hurt himself, he could hurt somebody else. Do I uh, want to save my job? Because if he goes home, gets into an accident, uh, it comes back to me. And then the manager starts to wonder, uh, okay, you're over serving these people. Well, not all these people. Some of these people were drinking before they came in here. And some of these people, it's really tough to tell how much they've been drinking. And, uh, it's it, and then you start worrying about your livelihood because a lot of us uh as of right now are still looking for jobs post covid and well we're not post covid yet but uh some of us are still trying to uh keep a roof over our heads because uh none of us are making the money that we used to but is serving alcohol to go going to do anything to boost business and uh because I've talked to a couple people that uh, work in restaurants that have to-go food, and uh, one of them, they weren't allowed to bring any customers inside their restaurant, but they could do to-go food only. And they had to deal with the customers asking questions like, uh, hey, while I wait for my food, can I go in the bar and have a drink? No, sorry, you can't go in the restaurant. Well, can I go in and play video poker for a little while? No, you can't come into the restaurant. But now, now, hey, I'm waiting for my food. Can I get a vodka crayon, please? Sure, I'll bring it right out to your car. But got to remember, open container laws aren't the same in every state, county, city. Uh, open container laws are, well, Vegas is the only one that I can think of right now where open container laws, it is. Uh, you start to wonder if it's damn near encouraged. Because you know, like you go to one place and get yourself a yard of daiquiris or a yard of margaritas, and you're standing there with this uh, decanter that, and you're holding it like Gandalf's staff, and walking down Fremont Street or walking down the Strip, and enjoying this as you're walking along, and it just happens to have the logo of the casino that you just left on it, so. It's their version of advertising. I mean, whether you see somebody walking around with a yard of uh, margaritas in their hand and you happen to notice it came from the Flamingo, you think the Flamingo has uh, has margaritas. Let's go. Or you see the empty, uh, empty container on the side of the street because the person just didn't want to hang on to it anymore. 
but it's and it says it came from uh another casino. Uh I don't want to name too many casinos cuz I don't have the rights to talk about them. Um and it says a name of another casino then you think, "Huh, let's go check that place out." Merchandising, merchandising, that's where the real money's made. Have the name of your restaurant or bar on all your glassware, your cutlery, your dishes, whatever. And even though it's extremely encouraged never to take your stuff out of your restaurant. There was one time where this one girl, uh, she left one restaurant and came over to my restaurant with a Long Island iced tea. And uh, I was working with Barb that night, and she was right on the money because we stopped serving multiple liquor alcohols at midnight. We were open until 1.30, but multiple liquor alcohol drinks were... Uh, done at midnight. It was you get uh alcohol and you get a mixer. Pissed off a lot of people, but hey, you can't make everybody happy. But but like I said, Barb was right on top of it and said, "Hey, give me that drink," and the girl handed it to her, and Barb immediately took the drink and poured it out in the in the sink, and she said the uh the customer was like, "What the hell." And she goes, you didn't get that from here, and you can't have outside alcohol or outside food or drink in my restaurant. So get out of here right now. The potential customer at this point felt righteous enough to uh, think she was getting back at Barb by giving her the finger before she was trying to take all of her friends out of our bar, but her her friends didn't want to leave. Her friends followed the rules. The potential customer even tried the, uh, hey, I bought that here. You've been nursing that for the last hour and a half? Ugh, boy, you are a slow drinker. Barb eventually told to me that the reason why she knew that was from a different bar is because of the lip on the glass. Now, some of you bartenders out there, here's a, this is a helpful hint for you guys. Uh, your glasses, well, well, a lot of restaurant glasses are pretty much the same. Uh, we all have the pounder glasses, we all have the chimneys, we all have the rocks glasses, but the design of the glasses sometimes are a little bit different. The rocks glasses and the uh, and the buckets uh, are were pretty much consistently different from every bar that I've seen, so it's, they're easy to spot. But the pounders, they all almost look the same. But somehow, in Barb's ultimate wisdom, she was able to spot that that was a glass from a different bar because of the lip on the bar just the lip and it was she could she spotted that with her excellent eyes i guess and uh, but for me i would have to feel the rim of the glass in order to feel that yeah there is a slight difference to the lip of the glass that we have here and the glass that is over at the other restaurant at least back in the early 2000s you could get in trouble for that uh you know, you know, people uh, bringing, walking down the street with a glass in their hand, and you don't want people to try to uh, take a glass from your restaurant and try to sneak it into another restaurant. Because what if they get caught by the cops on their way through and they happen to say, "Well, I got this from Shecky's Bar on Third, and you know, then you get in trouble for that, and that's not helping your customers drink responsibly. That's uh, just another thing that we have to worry about and babysit our customers for. Of course, that's why we have to develop an atmosphere in our bar or restaurant where people feel comfortable to sit down, chill out, and hang for however long they feel necessary and uh, be able to have a good time and in a non-threatening atmosphere. Which therein comes to the segue to this week's musical guest, ladies and gentlemen. This week's musical guest comes from Lawrence, Kansas. Here is Vitreous Humor with their single, Why Are You So Mean to Me?
disgusting slime Once again, that was Vitreous Humor with Why Are You So Mean to Me from their album Prometheus. If you want to go check them out, get on Bandcamp.com. Their new album gets released May 7th, 2021. Go check out their two available singles and buy their album when it becomes available. So anyway, people, what I'm trying to say is all uh, our responsibilities might have extended to the road also. So... Be sure to watch out for yourselves. Be sure to uh, make sure that your customers are drinking safely and going home safely. That's the name of the game because most of our customers, let's admit it, we want to see them come back. We want to see them pay, uh, spend money, tip us, uh, all that sort of thing. And uh, it's it it's a really uh, it hits your conscience really hard when you hear somebody got in some kind of accident and you think back to yourself. They were just here, and, you know, it might have been tragic, might might have been, you know, just a minor accident, but still, you have to sit back and think, they were just still here. And then all sorts of things start to happen to your conscience, where you worry about things like, did I over-serve them? Are we going to start having trouble with the Liquor Control Commission? You start worrying about stuff like that all of the time. And, you know, the most important thing is, is you want to keep your uh, atmosphere in your bar happy. You want to keep your uh, atmosphere in your bar comfortable and keep your customers happy. This uh, bartending now go moving out to the parking lot so that people can get a drink and then just go home. Uh, I don't know a lot about it. We'll see how it all ends up in the future. And, you know, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it'll be a way to boost business, boost the economy a little bit. But uh, there are still things that I'm myself as a bartender am a little bit apprehensive about be- just because it's uh, a new thing and it's, well, new thing to me. It's like I said, Texas has been doing it for a long time. And I was talking to a bartender who bartended back in uh, the early 80s. And they said it was entirely common for somebody to uh, be walking down the street with a margarita. Or uh, and another bartender that said that they had hell trying to, you know, stop these people from stuffing a beer bottle down their pants to try to walk to the other bar when their friends were ready to go. Hell, maybe it'll start encouraging the whole non-alcoholic spirits that are now becoming uh, mainstream right now. 
Uh, I'm still keeping an eye on that. I'll keep you guys posted about what that's going to be all about a little bit later. Uh, Cause there's a lot of research that I have to do on that sort of thing. Cause I really don't know uh, what uh, alcoholic companies are uh, alcohol companies are doing. I don't know which alcohol companies are doing it, but non-alcoholic alcohol is on the horizon if it's not already here. So, you know, Keep an eye, uh, keep an eye on on that. Keep an eye out on your customers, and not to mention, keep an eye out on yourself. Anyway, people, it is last call, last call for alcohol. Uh, you know, come on up to the bar, uh, and I, I'll give you one more. But remember, you got to drink that down before closing time. Otherwise, I'm just going to pull it from you. Thank you for so much for Vitreous Humor for allowing me to use your single wire. You so mean to me. Remember, you can check them out on Bandcamp.com. And their album will be available on May 7th. Until then, they've got two singles available. Go check them both out. Also like to thank my sponsor, DiageoBarAcademy.com. Uh, rem- remember, the world-class bartending competition is going on right now. And you have until April 13th to register to access the event. Remember, it is completely free. And you can either watch the stuff live or on demand. April 6th. Right after the speed round will be the time where they crown the United States Bartender of the Year. So you want to catch that. Not to mention all the other really groovy stuff that you can learn there. Go check it out today. Just go over to DiageoBarAcademy.com, click on the banner that says World Class and Register Today. I also want to thank all my followers on Facebook and Instagram. Remember, if you want to follow me on Facebook and Instagram... Just look up Hey Bartender Podcast, all one word, and you can follow me, get notifications on when the sh- new shows are coming up, or get notif- uh, get notifications on things that are happening, or just read a funny meme every now and then. That's pretty much the way it goes. Also, don't forget to visit www.heybartenderpodcast.com where I have Hey Bartender Podcast t-shirts on sale. You can get yourself a Hey Bartender Podcast t-shirt for $15 right now. All you have to do is go to www.heybartenderpodcast.com. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you so much for my followers. Uh, remember, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your fellow bartenders and servers about Hey Bartender Podcast because I got a lot of information and I got a lot of stories that I'd love to share with you guys. Not to mention, I would love to have you on the podcast. If you would love to be on the podcast and share a couple of your stories, email me, dude at heybartenderpodcast.com, and let's talk about it. Let's get you on the show and uh, talk about your restaurant, talk about your specials, talk about your specialties. It's, this show is all about the bartending, bartending and service industry. And it's important that we get you guys out there and, you know, we talk just regular conversation and, you know, talk about future plans, talk about uh, things that are happening in the world today. Let's talk about it. So remember, email me, dude at heybartenderpodcast.com. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, as usual, I just want to wish every single one of you, no matter who you are in this world, what you are in this world, I wish you all lots of love, lots of sex, lots of happiness, and don't take any shit from anyone. Good night. I think I need another drink. What do you mean it's last go? I just got here.